What's up guys and welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring Kita Edition! Uh, I'm back here, Karia, real quick. According to Ying Tao, I missed a drop from the roof. A bit above Pedia, you can drop down onto the outer wall of Karia Manor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, real quick. Thank you guys so much for helping me out with this stuff that I, that I missed. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea what's here. I just thought I'd been to this spot because um, it looked like where I'd been before, but I guess not. So, you know. There was also another rooftop area that I saw, but I'm guessing that this is the one. Uh, oh, yeah, see? Oh, there we go. All right, so it goes down to that right there, that item. So, yeah, thank you so much for that. A slumbering egg. And then I get to this side of the rooftop area. Which looks like it doesn't hold much yet. We'll see if there's anything else. Oh, it drops out. Oh, to a. Oh, great. Oh, great. Whoops. Boom! Ah! Oh, wow. <laughs> he put me to sleep, but I was able to get to him first. I had no idea a crab would be here. Ooh, a stone sword key. All right. Cool. Very nice. Well, thank you for that, Ying Tao. I appreciate it. All right, so now let me finally, finally go to the Eastern Tableland, and we're going to do Northeast Lyurnia. As that's loading, one more thing. This was a comment from uh, Hytini. Speaking of all those Godricks, Godwins, and Godfreys, did you notice all the important characters start with G, R, or M? Kind of like George R. R. Martin. Uh, I honestly didn't, and now that you've said it, and when I talked to you about it, for, for some reason in my mind, I was freaking about the R line. It's like unbelievable. I was like, now that you're saying it's like, oh my god, that's so cool. How did I not notice that? So yeah, you got Godwin, Godfrey, Godric. Uh, so there's the God line, and then you have with the uh, R's, you have Renala, Ronnie, Rena as her fake name, um, and then hold on, there's another R. Oh, Radigan. So who's America's wife, and then for the M's, there's America, Mil uh, Millicent, Melania, um, uh, Mikola. So there are so many. It's yeah, it's such a cool connection. So GRM, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it, Haitini. And also another thing I want to do, but first thing, oh look who it is! You guys recognize this? It's one of the guys we found in Sea of a River, but a non-spiritual form of the ancestral followers. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my most recent video so I can see that's been posted, so I can look at comments for that one. I'm a couple days ahead now in terms of like where I'm at for this recording um, because I'm hoping that this will help me stay ahead. Oh, wait, I wonder if that would have been, oh, okay. Well, I'll check that way later. I'm more just wondering if there's a Sight of Grace, because I don't remember where all the Sight of Graces are here. Either way, I'm going to be needing to run to the right here for a actually pretty important dungeon here that I want to go to. This is actually uh, one of the more important things, I feel, more interesting things, I should say. There's actually, there's probably going to be, depending on what I can do here in this episode, there's probably going to be a lot of important lore-related stuff this episode, now that I think about it. Uh, we'll leave him alone. I That's okay. Just don't need to spend the time to kill it. So, you got lucky this time, Grizzly Bear. You got lucky this time. And let's go ahead and plow forwards. So. Man, it's like wild to me that I'm actually like leaving so soon. Actually, wait, let me think about this. So, this video is posting the day that I will be on a plane. So I'm literally should be on a plane right now. Ah! Yeah, I forgot that this guy hits pretty hard. Honestly, it's, I don't think you even get anything for killing him. 
So it's not like... Um... Oh, damn it. Oh, no! Oh, ho, 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 that was close. That could have been really bad. Yeah, so as you can see, nothing. No drop. But he is guarding this. So if you know about it, you can just skip him. Uh, okay. From Elizabeth Cassidy, the ornamental sword and shield of Celtic. I don't think they're referring to time travel, just the golden lineage taking comfort in things that remind them of the glory days. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I, that's what I think, too. Uh, okay, so the beast eye quivers. This, again, is going to be relating to our um, beast man, Garunk. So now that we have the beast eye, it tells us that there's a death root nearby. So that's pretty nice. Uh, nice indicator there, so you can get more of that stuff from, you know, that quest line. Also, I think this is one of my favorite dungeons, to be honest, uh, just in general. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how clever the puzzle in this particular dungeon is. Uh, and I wasn't expecting it at all. It really threw me off, and like I said, it surprised me in a really good way. So, uh, let's not forget these Grave Glove Warts that I won't be using. But let's not forget them. Doesn't matter that I'm not using them. Oh, so see how this guy's, like, shiny now? And he's not dying. So this is like, we're basically back to Dark Souls 1, where we have these the special guys. This isn't, I don't think that's the one. But we have special guys who are basically controlling, oh, I guess that was the one. Who are like, summoning these some skeletons to come back to life again, so. We just, yeah, you have to deal with those guys here, so. Kind of like a Dark Souls 1 callback in a way, that those even exist. Ooh, a scimitar, nice. Uh, probably gonna be a skeleton here, I would assume. Yeah, there it is. In fact, it's probably another one, but let's take care of this guy first. There he is. It's like, I know there's, I know there's gonna be another one. <laughs> I'm gonna send these guys flying. I don't even know if it's really helpful that I send them so flying. It's probably not good. And that just takes me more time. Alright, the Rosas' axe. So, two things to look at. Rosas' axe we'll look at first. Which will probably be down here somewhere. Usher of Death Roses, who shows the path to the catacombs throughout the lands between, is depicted on this ritual axe. Oh, I'm going to have to try to, like, take a... In my videos of this, because I get video footage, I want to do, like, a zoom in on that for myself, just because I'm curious to see exactly what Roses looks like. The dead easily lose their way and have always been in sore need of a guiding hand. Shows the path to the... So this is almost like... This reminds me of uh, in Greek mythology. Uh, Roses is now reminding me of the... Uh, the guy on the River Styx whose name I'm not remembering. <laughs> it's reminding me of him. Alright, I guess I already had a falchion. Or no, wait, it was a scimitar I got. A curved sword with a single blade delivers slashing attacks with a sharp blade, but it's ineffective against thick armor and hides covered in tail tough scales. Uh, okay, wait. Let's see if Rose's axe has any special unique skill summons. Three skeletons will peer into this and then attack in tandem before vanishing. Also, I think I've been forgetting to equip the new uh, spirit ashes, so I'm going to try to remember to do that this episode. Try is the key word here. Uh, another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and solve this puzzle right away just for the sake of dealing with these skeletons. So, really cool stuff here. I love this, that that's how you do it. It's so cool that they have it so you ride up this. Yeah, it's awesome. Ride up the trap for it. Cool stuff. Spellproof dry liver. It actually, honestly, took me a while to find this one and realize this. I finally like started to realize because the skeletons kept coming back to life. Uh, finally took me a while to realize, like, wait, there's a place up there, and I wonder if I can ride up it and think to even try that because I was worried that it would just... Since it was a blade, I'd get hurt anyways, but you can see it's like a flat head there. And yeah, it's just it's just super cool. I like that one a lot. I think I have trouble actually at the bottom of this dungeon because there's a it's like a crab attack land. Crab attack land downstairs. I probably actually should have saved this for when I went to crab attack land, but hey, you know, whatever. So, I'm going to go deal with this crab first, who's going to pop up when I go here. Alright. Oh, I guess I'm a little overleveled now. I'll take it. I'll take being overleveled. 
Oh, this guy's gonna get the full brunt on me, so... Oh, no! Why am I so bad at crabs? I don't think I was good at crabs in Dark Souls 2, uh, 3 either, so... Ah, well. Alright, got them. Don't have to worry about them no more. Yeah, so going down here, uh, you cannot open up this gate from, uh, this side. Actually, I don't even know if you... Yeah, never mind. From this side. I should just come around, I guess, now that I think about it to save time, but I forgot that it looped. Anyways, whatever. Great Glove War 3. And then a Rune Arc, which I never used. <laughs> I should. It's just the fact that I, if you die, it, the effect wears off. So I'm, I always do this with games where I'm just always too afraid to use something that is a limited resource that's going to run out like that. Although I know they're super useful, and you do find a lot. I know you can buy them, but I don't remember if you can buy infinite Rune Arcs. I mean, I guess lore-wise, it wouldn't really make sense for there to be infinite rune arcs, considering they're fractured pieces of the Elden Ring, I think, so. You know, there's that factor. There's that factor. All right, uh, let's run through these guys, because you can see that they're special ones again by the glow that's on them. Yeah. Look at this. A bunch of the... Tree Spirit guys as statue form here throughout the catacombs. So, this is going to be a major, major illusory wall coming up. And actually, you know what? They do a pretty good job of making it feel like, honestly, like at least to me, and this is me knowing that there's illusory walls. If you don't know there's illusory walls in the game, which I, hopefully you figure out by that point where you're heading to Karia Manor. But if you don't know there's illusory walls at this point, you wouldn't really necessarily think to hit this wall, but like... The fact that you're running up this way, and it just... It kind of just looks like there should be something there, right? At least to me. So this one's pretty well... I think pretty well done in that regard. So, there are actually two bosses in this specific... Catacomb? Catacomb? I'm gonna finish grabbing that lever, though, first before I move on and finish this just because uh then i won't have to like run as far it should save me some time i think that's everything down here okay there's some more skeletons i don't care about them though that's fine you guys can chill have fun have fun on your own bye <laughs> they don't give me that many runes it's just not worth the time just not worth the time it's so hard for me to break out of my instincts to kill everything that I see in these games. Um, but it really is just a time sink at some point. And especially when you're out in the open field. I mean, sometimes there's secrets when you do it, so I, I don't know. But anyways, I opened up the other boss chambers, so both boss chambers are open. But we're going to start with this one just because if I, you know, if I beat him, then it's not as far of a run. And we're going to find here a Black Knife Assassin. So, this is one of the assassins who was involved in the plot to murder Godfrey. Or, uh, Godfrey. I mean, Godwin. Excuse me. I always, I always say do that. I always do that! You dumb assassin who I'm having trouble hitting again. Oh my. That's... I thought that was going to be blood damage, actually. Oh no! Uh-oh, uh-oh. No! Okay, that's it. Quick cut. Okay, I'm back. Ready for the fight. Now I got my healing... Wait a second, was there a... Oh my god, was there a summon right there? I almost want to die again just so I can see it. Ah, uh, you know what? But also, I don't want to... Please... If I die, cool, I'll check it out. If not, then that's all good. I'm gonna go for my runes because it's stupid, and then if I... <laughs> then I won't feel as bad about dying, I guess, too. Alright, let's get the heal off. What the? I... The skeleton just attacked me from behind. That was... Aw, uh, that was awesome. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it's so funny that this skeleton's there. Like, hey! Hey! I want to help, too. I want to help, too. There we go. I knew I'd be able to get him there. I'm sorry. I'm not seeing what the if it was a summon sign. 
Maybe I'll remember to look back in the footage to see if it was or wasn't. Assassin's Cerulean Dagger and Black Knife Print. So the Black Knife Print is the ultra interesting thing here. The Cerulean Dagger, cool, but nothing I'm really going to be using or caring too much about. Yeah, I, I feel like I ran past one right there. Anyways, let's look at both, though. So, the Cerulean Dagger is exactly like the Crimson Dagger, except for it restores your FP on critical attacks. Uh, model after the Darkly Gleaming Blade is using the Knight of Black Knives, those which gave the, the demigods their first taste of death. But, now let's look at this key item, and this is what you're going to need to progress the Roger storyline. Uh, Black Knife Print. On the Night of the Black Knives, someone stole a fragment of death from Maliketh, the Black Blade, and imbued its power into the Assassin's Daggers. This mark is evidence of the ritual and hides the truth of the conspiracy. Now, I don't think we've heard about Maliketh yet, I'm pretty sure. So, um, they're stealing a fragment of death from him, from this character, and then, imb uh, again, imbuing the power. So, the death rune is very well in death associated with Maliketh. So, put that in your brain. Maliketh, death. Death-related stuff. Um, Mark is evidence of the ritual and hides the truth of the conspiracy, although we know it's Ronnie, um, because we've been talking to her. That's what she told us. She literally told us that she did it. She was like, it was me! I did it! I was the one behind the conspiracy. Alright, Beast Eye is still quivering, though, because we didn't beat the normal boss. Who we're gonna go find, and I think, uh... I think it's actually pretty typical behind this specific boss we're gonna run into that they have, um, death roots. Keep on forgetting they got that root resin. I don't think it respawns, but eh, maybe it does. So, boss number two. Not as interesting, but, uh... Oh, crap. That's right. I forgot that it was, uh... Oh my god, it was this type of battle. Jesus! Wow. Okay. That was that was great. Love me some gank battles. Truly my favorite. Ah no. That's that, eh? This sort of thing. No! <laughs> Two hits and he's dead. Nope. Oh, I guess I should be commenting in case I somehow win. Man, it just keeps on like tearing me up. There. I was playing dumb, and then as soon as like I lost my runes, I was like, that's that. Twin Sage Sorcerer Ashes. Uh, I'm more just embarrassed, to be honest. I don't mind repeating bosses, but I'm like, wow, this is just sad. Alright, Twin Sage Sorcerer Ashes. Ashes. Spirit of a Rhea Lucaria Sorcerer wearing stone. wearing a stone crown. Those who study the Twin Sage Conspectus are the Academy's elite, capable of mastering the Glintstone Comet Shard and Crystal Burst Sorceries. So I, it's interesting, actually. I'll have to look at those again. I guess those are what they consider to be some of the highest forms of their sorceries. Comet Shard, stuff from the sky. That would make sense. Crystal Burst is interesting. Uh, we haven't gotten our Death Root yet, so that means you know what's going to be in here. Why it's a Death Root, so. Um, yeah, it's funny. I still, It's not like I even would have had enough for a level up anyways, even with all of these runes combined. It just would have been nice. It just feels bad. It still feels bad. Okay, I'm actually going to start now from here, and I'm going to take the upward path up. Uh, since last time I took the under path. So, might as well. But yeah, this again, important one. And I'm going to go back to Roger a little bit later. But first I want to explore a little bit more before we do 
the Roger chat. The Roger chat, as I'm going to call it. Hi. Don't mind me. I'm just running through. And this would be the alt way now to get to the exact same spot. And, oh, old palace ruins. Ruins. It is nice that I take these guys out with just like the double one twos. There's a bunch of archers around here, so you gotta be a little cautious um, of that, which are gonna be coming up. And there it is, there he is. So that's what I was talking about. I think there is actually another site of grace down at the bottom area there that I missed somehow, but I'm gonna, or you know what? It's probably just past them. Well, hey look, look at this statue there. That's, that's uh, the same statue that we found underground. So, I guess it goes to show that the old palace ruins here are actually an old ruin of uh, this civilization that believed the same sorts of things, right? So, that's interesting. I didn't know that about this. Um, it makes sense given the name and the characters here, but now it makes a little more sense to me. Oh my god, I'm dead. Yeah, so I saw the uh, the second archer gearing up to do one of the homing shots, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to heal in time. Maybe there would have been a way if I just hopped off. Um, if I hopped off real fast, maybe it would have been possible. I wonder if this is what I was thinking of. It just, was just this stake America. Well, anyways, it makes it seem like it was a bad idea to attack the guys who were up here and just, like, you know, focus instead on... Trying to get the other uh, archer down. I just wasn't expecting the double archer. I didn't realize there were going to be two like that. Okay. Great. Oh my god. Alright, let's go get the Sight of Grace before anything else happens. Anyways, yeah, it's cool, lore-wise, that I, I didn't realize that before. And I'm just happy to, like, notice something new now that I'm paying a little more attention to the statues and just be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because I've been wondering about why these guys were above ground um, and how that relates. So I guess there's an answer now that this is probably perhaps before they were driven underground or where they were driven now. I mean, it could go either way. The fact that the spirit's underground... But then it, the spirits could be like some sort of death lingering thing given the whole area and what everything's supposed to represent there. Um, you know, that could be the case with those spirits in Siofra. Alright, anyways, we gotta go this way now. Where we're gonna find a fun bunch of things. So this is the ruined labyrinth. Okay. And this one's gonna drop like the normal ones where you just have to clean them off. So let me, ah! <laughs> I'm just trying to help clean you. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? There's some crap all over you. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm trying to hurt Torrent. Jeez, what's wrong with you? Torrent's a kingly king. How dare you? All right, I should be falling apart now. Ah! I'm having rocks on my head. All right, so we dropped another mausoleum, which is nice. Uh, so that's going to stay permanently dropped, and I'll just keep on moving because I don't have anything that I feel like duplicating here. Actually, you know what? I want to see if you can duplicate Godric's rune or if it's like specific mausoleums relate to specific demigods. So I'm going to find that out right now. Open your door. Just as slow as you please. Let's find out. Oh, I guess they do. Look at that. I can't do the Godric one there. All right. Well, news to me. News to me. Oh, wow. Such a cool view of the Academy of Rhea Lucaria over there. Uh, okay, so we're going to be eventually going up for another... Um, No, no. 
Uh-oh, I went the wrong way there. For another site of grace. This is actually called the mausoleum compound up here, and you guys are about to see why. But I figured, I don't know if I really explored this spot, so I thought I'd take a look. I mean, clearly it's a way to drop back down. Oh, interesting. Look at that. All right, I'm going to come back to that after I get this site of grace so I can drop down and not worry about it. So, yeah, that's interesting. All right. New thing. But really, we want to head up here. And I don't really actually think there's that much you can do up here. I really think it is for the mausoleums and just the interesting lore fact of it, of seeing all those statues there. And, you know, now that we know what they relate to. All right, another one. I get it. You're about to jump. I understand now. I understand. But you have to be cleaned. You have stuff all over you. I know you don't want to take a bath. You're like a dog. You're like, no bath for me. No bath. So, I know. I know. Nobody likes taking baths. I get it. You know, I wonder... Is it this way? Where is the site of place? Oh, there's the minor earth tree that way. Okay. There is a site of grace, though. I promise. I know there's one. Where is it, though? Now it's driving me crazy, because the whole area is called the Mausoleum Complex, or something like that. Uh, like, it has a complex of being a mausoleum. Um, anyways, that's that's how I found out, was from the site of Grace, so there definitely is one. Wait, maybe that... Oh, is that drop that I was going to do? What did it take me back? I don't know. Let's find out. I'll do that drop, actually. And if I spot the site of Grace on the way, then I spot the site of Grace. And if not, that's cool. I'm just ultra surprised I haven't found it yet. Oh, oh no. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go get my runes in a little bit because I'm going back up there anyways. I just happen to be closer from that set of grace to this spot that I wanted to check out. So I might as well do this first. Arteria leaf. Wow. Um, just what I was hoping for. Just what I was hoping for. But hey, at least now I know. I mean, you know, there could be something else down there that I just i am not aware of. That's interesting if I keep going the other way. Um, so there's, the, you know, that possibility. All right, let's get my s grace back. And there actually is another mausoleum, and there's 100% a site of grace somewhere around here that calls this, like, the mausoleum compound, or... I don't know, something like that. Ah! Where is it? Where is the site of grace? How come I can't find it? Alright, you know what? I guess I'll worry about it later. Um, I'm just gonna keep on heading this way... Uh, all right, we'll just take care of the minor root tree then. So, minor root tree it is, and then I'll look for the site of grace. All right, for this site of grace, actually, you want to take these guys out. Kind of forgot about that since, yeah, these guys are gonna um, attack you while you're attacking the earth tree, so I actually find this earth tree to be a little bit more annoying because of that, since there's that prep that you have to do. Which is just a good idea every time you're going to fight him. I don't know if I have a jawbone axe, so I'll take a look at it. I don't think it actually has anything interesting to say, but we're going to look anyways. Axe made from a herbivore skull, weapon of the ancestral followers who disdain metal. So these are definitely ancestral followers. This axe is more of a bludgeon. It foregoes a bladed edge instead using the beast's molar teeth to buffet foes. Dealing strike damage. Cool. Cool stuff. All right. Now let's deal with you. No. Oh, wow. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that hit me, but... Here we are. Here we are. Thought I was far enough away. Alright, one, two, and you're gonna do a third strike? You are. That gives me a chance to swoop in. One, 
to... Oh, nice. Jump. Sweet. Just what I was hoping for. Okay. No. And you're going to do another? Yes. Thank you. Uh-huh. One and two. Give me the third. Thank you. And I'll get another double on you. All right, now we got to run. Run! Run, Torrent! Run! We must run away because he's doing this thing, and he's going to do it again because I got too far away. I have to not bait him into doing more of this attack. You can actually hit him with that bubble there, but it's just not like... It's just not the best idea. All right. And I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to take the risk. Okay. Enemy felled. Magic Shrouding Cracked here and Lightning Shrouded Cracked here. And Holy. Magic Lightning and Holy. Wow, I forgot they gave you three. All right, let's look at those. Magic Lightning and Holy. Um, well, that's it, you know. <laughs> they boost the power of... Uh, of your magic attacks, lightning attacks, or holy attacks. So they're actually good for, it looks like, you attacking, not for defense. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's that's it for the minor Erd tree, I believe. So to get to this part up here, the rest of it, we actually have to start from that East Rikari, uh, Rail Lucarian Gate. But what I'm going to do, I think, is just... I'm going to fast forward while I look for that other side of Grace because it really is driving me crazy right now. So, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys enjoy that. <laughs> okay, there it is. I see it. All right. I knew there was one here. I knew it. That was what I needed. Okay, so now we got the Mausoleum Compound. And now, again, we can't check out here yet. We actually have to come from this side, so that is what I'm going to do. But you know what? Before I do that, let's do the Roger stuff, because that's going to be some more lore stuff on there. So let's talk to Roger and show him what we found. Oh, wait, that's right. Uh, so I'm entering Ron's Temple Hold right now, and this is Encha who's attacking me. Uh, she... So he, sorry, is Sir Gideon related. Sir Gideon off near the all knowing slash all hearing, and and she's attacking us because we found one of the medallions of Road. So that's why there's this Ensha attack happening. Uh, well, I'll show you guys after this. Great enemy, really? Ensha's considered a great enemy. All right. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. That that happened last episode. Clinging Bone. Okay, let's go ahead and look at that. I think uh, this Catalyst, right? There it is. Horrific weapon made of a hardened skeletal arm, wielded by Encha of the Royal Remains, fitted by placing one's hand into the fist's grips until they dig in. O oh, clinging creature, a king relinquishes not the hand. Hmm. King releases, relinquishes not the hand. Interesting. Uh, okay, the other thing is that now Encha's dead, we can get the Encha set, which is the Royal Remains. So let's take a look at the Royal Remains and... Okay, yeah, it's so close, as it should be. All right, Royal Remains set. Helmet first. Helm graced with gold human bones, worn by the unspeaking adherents of Sir Gideon the All-Knowing, uh, it slowly replenishes HP when HP is reduced. That's pretty sick. It is said that the bones belong to an ancient lord. The soulless king. The lord of the lost and desperate who was known as Ensha. Oh, so I guess the king with the bone arm was Ensha? It said the bones belong to an ancient lord. I wonder why Ensha as an ancient lord... The lord of the lost and desperate was known as Ensha. I also wonder if that relates to the person who, like, guides, you know, that they were just talking about, who guides the dead along, and the un that that was supposed to be Ensha. Um, because that sounds similar, right? The Lord of the Lost and Desperate. Although I do wonder why Ensha is following along with, uh, 
Sir Gideon Offnir. Always good to see you, sir. So, all right. Maybe I should tell you. Lately, I feel I'm on the precipice of falling into a deep, fathomless slumber. And I have an inkling it could spell trouble for you somehow. So I just wanted to get the apology out of the way beforehand, since you're so scary and all. <laughs> it's funny. Wait, I thought, I really thought that you gave him that fingerprint. Huh, okay. <sighs> all right, well, let's talk to Sir Gideon Offnir. Um, weird, why is that? Uh, okay, let's ask him about Ensha. Oh, my apologies for that nasty business. Ensha got rather ahead of himself, it seems. As his master, I'd like to express my regret. But now, Ensha is slain and gone. Finished. Forevermore. Ah, yes. Allow me to tender some advice in regard to the half of the secret medallion you possess. Find the Albinoric woman. She hides in a cave to the west of the Laskia ruins, which jut from the mist-shrouded lake of Leonia. She knows the location of the medallion's counterpart, I am sure. Find the Albinoric woman. She hides in a cave. She knows the location. Okay, so I guess he hints you on her location. That's interesting. I didn't know that because I did it in the reverse order. Uh, yeah, so he is the one clearly now... Uh, and probably with Ensha. He probably had Ensha murdering everybody, at, on the, like all the Albinorix under him, in order to try to get this secret medallion, uh, the Halix tree, the Halix tree secret medallion. Um, so I guess he, he probably also, I mean, who knows? Like, he says that Ensha got ahead of himself, but he might have actually been the one who sent Ensha out on us to try to get us. Uh, how many stones do I have? None. Cannot level up my weapon at all. Okay. The other thing that I will need to do is go down here. And talk to another person. Ah, you. Please, leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I... I need to think. Ah, you. Please. It's pathetic, and Ah, oh, please. It's pathetic, and All right, so I think... Let's just warp right back to the table of Lost Grace and see if that recesses anything, because we should be able to talk to Sir Gideon. Um, unless the fact that I didn't summon her is what makes this different. But I have a bunch of things that I can give Nefeli Lou. So, let's ask about Nefeli now. Ah, yeah. You've already heard. Indeed. It seemed the whelp harbored suspicions... So I had no further use for her. Honestly, what a man to do. A determined plebeian is more wicked than an omen horn, quite frankly. I suspect that's just what the Queen wants. A dose of ambition to incite the tarnished. I think he's talking about Queen Merica there. Uh, and the ambition being like the, the grace and all that stuff to try to get us like tarnished motivated to do things. Uh, but we can't show him Celibus's potion and talk to him about it. Is that potion what I think it is? Bloody Celibus. I suppose he's up to something again. Oh, I won't interfere. You go ahead and do what you must. The round table has no code to speak of. But I ask you this. Are you really going to do the bidding of that twisted dolly botherer? Or would you rather hand that potion to me? And see if we can't get one over on the bastard. Uh, we're not going to hand it over well, yet. I won't force you, but I think your plan would be a dreadful waste. She's not herself right now. And though I have no need of her, she still has potential. Certainly more value than she'd have as a bloody puppet. Yeah, I mean, so between like what we've seen and what... Sir Gideon's like laying out for us here. It's pretty clear that Celavis's potion is going to turn her into one of his puppets that we've seen, like in the uh, the underground area, and just yeah, literally turn her into a puppet. So he just would have another puppet with Nefeli Lou. Um, so let's go talk to her again. Ah, oh, you. 
Please, leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but... So you know already, do you? Right. It's true. My father cast me out for indulging my emotions. Forgetting the mission. Punishment for offing his pawns. Father. Mother. Lord Gideon has offered me guidance all my life. I would have done anything for him. To place him on the throne of Elden Lord. And yet I... Though it was not my intent, I betrayed him. So that gives us some of Sir Gideon's off the year's intentions. Um, and again, she just plainly states it out that her killing people at this Albanark village because she was so bothered by it, um, it was actually Gideon's doing. And Gideon was behind all that, as we've been hearing and finding out again. Uh, and Gideon has intentions. He wants to be Elden Lord too. So, just like you. And I can no longer trust him father to think he'd order his men to enact such tragedy. Where is the justice he purports in that? He once told me that if he became Elden Lord, he would never allow the downtrodden to be cheated ever again. Was he simply lying to me? Mm, maybe. Probably. No, no, no. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now... I've lost it. I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm assuming I've never I gave her the Stormhawk King before and then her quest line just stopped for me and I don't know what it is and I guess I was seeing that some people think it's a glitch. Uh her quest is glitched out or something like that because it just never goes. Uh for Selavis's potion, I'm assuming it turns her into a puppet and then you can get her as a spirit ash eventually basically would be my guess. Um but I'm going to do neither at the moment. It is funny though giving her the potion. I'm sorry, not giving her potion, giving Sir Gideon off near the potion, because then uh, he allows you to basically help trick Sullivan and screw Sullivan. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. All right, uh, Bellum Highway. All right, so we're now going to head up this way to finish off Northeast Liernia, and then that should open me up to finish the Academy of Rail Lucaria in the next episode. Well, not finish. I started. I doubt I'll be able to finish it in one episode, but at least I'll be able to get it started. All right. Ooh, you can pillage this silver meat. I got some horse meat. Dream come true. So mainly I'm going this way to get to Bellum Church. And like I said before, it also leads to rolled, uh, or sorry, the ground lift of Dectus. But we're not going to worry too much about the ground lift of Dectus. It's more just a... Uh, Interesting factoid for us right now. The Bellum Church is what I'm all about, which is right over here. So a couple things here at the Bellum Church. For one, we get yet another sacred tier, which is going to be here, which I don't need right now because, I mean, it just doesn't matter for me because my health, I haven't upgraded oh, update at you, all. Is that you over there? Have you ever heard of fingerprint grapes? They're special grapes, which only grow on those who've been clasped by the burnt fingers. I would truly love to try one. The distant light seems far closer than before. But I can't sense a thing from the usual grapes anymore. Please, could you donate a fingerprint grape to me? Without one, I don't know. I feel like I might go mad. Uh, you sure you might go not go mad with the fingerprint grape? <laughs> okay, so basically, um... She seems to have gotten over the fact that she was eating eyeballs pretty quickly. Uh -huh. And then went back to eating them, and they're not doing anything for her. Now she wants a fingerprint grape. The, the fingers she's talking to are the three fingers, uh, who we've heard are associated with madness from way before when we were in that one village. That was all madness. You know, everyone was going crazy. And um, yeah, we'll be able to find out even more about that as we travel up here. So actually, pretty quick reveal. But that's why I wanted to do all the stuff with her before, was to get her to that point. So once I do this, she's already at the Bellum Church. So it's nice that that's the case. It's a nice back way to get to the Grand Lift. Also, if you want to go to Dectus. Yeah, the Grand Lift of Dectus is right there, right in front of me. I can't access it yet because I didn't go into Fort Ferrath. But uh, you can literally, you can pretty easily run through Fort Ferrath if you want to go up there without doing much. It's a... Uh, 
it's easy to run through to get the medallion um, for that, if that's what you want. See that up there? That's the Eye of Sauron. Uh, yeah, and obviously just by like it being up there and inflicts frenzy. Or madness, sorry, madness. So, uh, she was talking about going mad, and now we're at something that literally causes madness um, by being close to it. But the thing I'm going to want to do here is... Oh my god! No, 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 no. Yeah, as soon as I get inflicted, by the way, it's just gonna... It doesn't kill you, it just hurts you for a bunch. And that's why I'm trying to get away from these rats. No! A couple interesting things for you guys. Madness actually only affects Tarnished. Looks like I'm about to get mad. Alright. Figured I'd just let myself get hit there. It also seems to destroy my um, FP when you go mad. So your FP is like completely gone from madness, but the main thing I was worried about was honestly my health. Okay, there we go. And where is my runes? There we go. Alright. So once you take out the, the tower here and the, the person who keeps on casting this madness inflicting thing, you're uh, you're good. You don't have to worry about this tower anymore, and it can affect you from pretty far away, which is why I wanted to deal with it here and now. Ooh, Howl of Shabriri. Howl of Shabriri. We'll take a look at that in a moment. I also got a yellow ember on the way here that I'm going to look at. Uh, yeah, so it seems like all of these guys, they're like combined madness is causing this. Also, you can see it's like coming out of my eyeballs, so that's another detail. Oh, whoops. Uh, okay. But, really, you just want to... You get the Howl of Shabriri, but the top is just to take these guys out, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay, so first thing is the Yellow Ember that I got. An Ember taken from the eye socket of a corpse. A sign that the deceased suffered from the Flame of Frenzy. This grape has ripened and burst. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're starting to hear a little bit about with the Madness stuff. And then the Flame of Frenzy... Howl of Shabriri, that's what we got. Incantation originating from the Maddening Three Fingers. And this is who uh, the Blind Maiden was referring to, basically, when she said the fingers grip. Releases a maddening shriek that causes madness buildup in foes nearby. It is said that the sickness of the Flame of Frenzy began with Shabriri, the most reviled man in all history. Wow! The most reviled man in all of history. Uh, and we actually are going to find Shabriri eventually, uh, which is shocking, but yeah, so. Uh, let me just see if I have a helmet. Hold on. There is a tower to my left, but you actually need a helmet that I don't think I have. Okay. So that tower over to the left there, which is um, this way over here, I'm not going to go to right now because I actually can't access it, even though there's an interesting thing that you get for defeating the guy in front, but that's going to be a post-Academy of Rhea Lucaria thing. Just because I, I literally cannot go inside right now. You have to have one of the Rhea Lucarian helmets to get inside. And now we're back. We're at the Frenzied Flame Village, so another area that's been inflicted by madness. And you can see it in their eyes as they're all like glowing with that yellow Frenzied Flame. So yeah, this village is just completely gone. <laughs> frenzied Cookbook 1. Oh wait, I'll look at it in a second. I don't know if I got a Frenzied f Cookbook yet. Alright, item. Key item. No. A record of crafting techniques left by those afflicted by the madness of the Flame of Frenzy. So there's that. Uh, okay. Another reason I wanted to take care of that Eye of Sauron, by the way, is because there's going to be an invasion coming up here pretty soon. Oh, yeah, so he was just casting their causes, uh, Frenzy if it hits you. Great. All these guys have Frenzy, as you can see, poking out of their eyeballs. Whoa! All right, I'm pulling it back up here to show at this point that there is no, that the tower is gone, even though I had to reload since I died. So, and more yellow embers. Um, 
Oh, actually, let's look at what this plant is. It'll probably be related. Oh, early flower. Okay, I thought it might be madness related, but I guess not. Um, yeah, I just thought it'd be worth showing that. And what I was starting to say before I died is that there's a there's an invasion ahead. And you can be in the range of the madness inflicting tower while you're being invaded. So that's why it's really a good idea to take out the, the frenzy tower. It's pretty specifically for that. <laughs> hey, you guys stop. You guys stop. No! Nay! Yeah, that's probably gonna hit me. Ugh, God, that hit me really hard. Alright. Just in case there's anything else in this village, uh, I don't think there is, but that's why I wanted to take out these guys so I could properly explore instead of just running through. Oh, hey, as soon as I say that, hey, Cuckoo Circle from one of them, Shabriri's Woe. That's, oh yeah, that's cool. All right, good thing I did. Shabriri's Woe and a Cuckoo Circlode. Circoat. Let's look at the Circoat first. Armor worn by Rhea Lucaria Academy soldiers. The circle depicts twin cuckoos peering into a flourishing mass of glintstone. That makes sense. Glintstone for uh, Academy Rhea Lucaria. To a glintstone sorcerer, the body is a transient thing. The cuckoo alone knows its insignificance, yet watches over it all the same. All right, and uh, Shabriri, the talisman that we got. Shabriri's woe. Disturbing likeness of a man whose eyes have been gouged out. The corners of his mouth are upturned in an almost flirtatious manner. It constantly attracts enemies' aggression. People hate Shabriri. It is said that the man named Shabriri had his eyes gouged out as punishment for the crime of slander, and with time, the blight of the flame of frenzy came to dwell into the empty sockets. I do wonder which came first with Shabriri. Um, if it is the eyes being gouged out or the madness. Or if the eyes being gouged out is part of what created in the long run the madness. Which now is like spread. But yeah, so Shabriri, Shabriri, uh, quite the interesting character in that regard. This looks like it actually is going to be something I want. So, Frenzy Burst. Oh wow, one attack doesn't kill that. You can see that there's a Miranda flower around here. Well, I'm glad I did this just for that f that uh, spell. All right, let's take a look at it. Uh, was it frenzied burst? Okay, incantation originating from the maddening three fingers. In times past, every single person who attempted to control the flame of frenzy suc succumbed to madness after a desperate internal struggle. This incantation is testament to a meager victory. I guess it's like trying to like get everything out, right? And that's why it's all bursting out is because you're trying to get the the front the madness out of you. Ah, Lord Vike, it seems that you are no lord after all. Then where is he? Our true lord, our lord of frenzied flame. We beg of you, incinerate all that divides and distinguishes. May chaos take the world. That's how he says it, I promise. Ha 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 Alright, I should be getting an invaded here pretty soon. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't been. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's fine by me because I'm happy to go ahead and get this Sight of Grace. But that's actually really weird. Uh, okay, another Sacred Tear. And we get the Finger Maiden fillet. Basically the Finger Maiden set. What is going on? How did I not get invaded? Alright, let's look at the Finger Maiden set, though. I don't know if it's Filet or Fillet. I honestly don't know. Filet or Fillet worn by maidens who serve the two fingers. Because when I think of a Filet, I think of, like, for meat. You know, like, uh, Filet, Steak Filet or Filet of Fish. The maidens live to serve a chosen tarnish, sharing their guidance and the wisdom of the two fingers. The guidance of grace would ensure that the pair be brought together, or at least such was the promise long ago. Didn't happen for me. Um, yeah, this, that's what all that says. It brings to my attention actually something that in the comments. 
Hytini said, About the maiden blood, the room where you start the game has a dead woman. Maybe that's your actual maiden, but she died before your arrival, and now Melina kind of takes over. Uh, and a bunch of you are talking about how, like, the gesturing happened to Hytini. He said it happened so often he thinks it's from holding X and moving the controller, which turns on the gyroscope. Whereas uh, Dr. Havoc said it was from holding the O button. I don't see how it could be from holding the O button, though, because I'm holding it all the time to run. So that doesn't really make much sense to me. Uh, other thing is, where is the invasion? I, actually, I really need this invasion to happen. I wonder if it's a time thing where it only happens at a certain time of day. Yeah, this invasion is actually pretty important to progress the storyline, so I'm trying to do. Uh, okay, that's very odd. It's not happening. Um, okay, I, I'll just keep on running down here for now just to see if there's anything interesting down here, but... I should have been invaded, and the fact that I'm not is actually not good. Because <laughs> that's what's gonna... That's basically how I get the thing that I need to progress the storyline that I'm doing. I mean, unless Lord Vike only turns up, like, later if you do something else I'm not aware of. Um, okay, so this is the top part of where we saw with the mausoleums, by the way. That's this spot right here. Yeah, I honestly don't think there's anything over here, though, so... And now, of course, I'm... Dealing with all these Miranda flowers, and I can't even teleport. Uh, okay, yeah, not allowed to teleport. Man, I might have to fast forward again while I try to see if I can get invaded. Because it was supposed to happen around here, and it's very weird that it didn't. Yeah, both times it happened for me, we're, like, right in this spot, so... Odd. All right, I'm going to warp around see if I can figure it out. Okay, I looked it up. But apparently, this quest, there's a bug. So I'm going to potentially... So I'm going to do a couple other things here. Um, I might look more into it for another recording. But um, yeah, apparently, there's a bug where for some reason, the invasion that needs to happen to continue that quest line doesn't happen. Uh, I'm going to go down here. There's also some things in the roundtable hold I want to finish up and start doing, but... First things first. I don't want any trouble. Just wanted to show you that there's this guy here. Uh, Bewitching Branch. Ooh. Imperium Mikola is loved by many people. Indeed, he has learned very well how to compel such affection. Uh, oh, that's cool. I don't remember finding a Bewitching Branch. I'm sure I have. I just kind of forgot about it. And by that, so I don't... Not... And, okay. That's everything from him I'm going to grab for now. And let's go ahead and go down... Uh, specifically, I'm going down, by the way, here, just so I can... Oh, there's also a Sword Lord thing I wanted to look at, too. But anyways, I'm going down here specifically. Uh, if I go straight ahead, that's going to be another way up. And I guess while I'm right next to it, might as well just grab it. But the main reason I'm going down here is just to go ahead and grab a couple sites of Grace, just so I have them. So, I'm also killing this guy just to see if he drops anything. Because, I don't know, maybe... Nope, doesn't look like it. So there's a golden seed over here, and there's also the other way to get up to the Altus Plateau from this direction. I'm not going to do either, but, you know, since I'm right next to it at this point, might as well just grab the Site of Grace. So that way, when I come back, you know, I can just quickly warp instead of needing to do the whole run-through part. Leorne of the Lakes. Not much longer. Ah, I'm kidding. I got to do the Academy of Rhea Lucaria first. And let's go run and grab this smithing stone five. Oh, getting what I need. But I only got one, so you can tell that this is probably the way you need to go just by that. Okay, I guess I have to rest so I can warp. Because I think I just went a little further away, so. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward again. <laughs> Alright, so I'm turning it on because I'm not ba uh, past the point where I was at for the Bellum Church thing. So that's specifically why. And apparently there's a bridge across. I don't know if I use that. It might just be, honestly, just to go back to the other part that I was already at for the behind Caria Manor. That would be my guess. But yeah, really I was just going to go grab this side of Grace just to fill it up. Just so I could feel like I have even more complete here.
And I think Liernia now, I think this is every site of Grace nabbed, I'm pretty sure, other than the ones that are in the Academy. Uh, and I'm going to go back here just to continue on with some... Uh, some questline stuff, because I should have been able to give Roger that black knife. And it could be because I haven't progressed Fia's questline at all. Or some Fia stuff, so. Oh, crap. Roger's done. That sucks a lot. So apparently Roger's questline is screwed up for me, because I had to do Fia stuff before I got the black knife I print. Would you like me to I mean, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, it just kind of sucks, because I would have liked to have seen what he had to say, so... Uh, it sucks in that regard, honestly. Because I didn't go to the Altus Plateau. I don't know if like me just activating that Sight of Grace you did it. So... Alright, got another Baldekin's Blessing. Do you My know? Dear, have you ever heard of Black Knife Prince? Dear Roger likes to talk of them when abed. And the ancient plot in which the first of the demigods was slain. The black knives wielded by the assassins who committed the act, along with the impressions they made, somehow hide the truth of the conspiracy. These grand affairs are hardly my forte, but dear Roger began to weep as he spoke. That was what I wanted. In truth, I've heard tell from someone else about the black knife prints that fascinate dear Roger so. Oh, she actually gives you a clue as to where it but is, it huh? Wouldn't be right to give this to him, stuck as he is in the round table hold. Perhaps you could make use of it? Dear Roger, the ancient plot, the black knives wheel along with the impressions they... Then good day. It's interesting that she's not letting me uh, progress yet for the rest of the storyline with her, but... Alright, thank you so much, Fia. I appreciate that. Let's go see if I can talk to Roger, but I doubt it. Which, again, I'm, that really sucks. Uh, I, don't, I just wish I knew what I did that, that screwed it up. I'm, I really was excited, because I haven't actually seen what he says yet, so I was excited <sighs> about that. All right, let's just reload the Table of Grace and see if at least... I doubt it'll do anything different, but it's just worth doing. Grant, I mean, I could have just rested that round table hold, but it felt like that was... For some reason, it just felt quicker. I don't know. No! Ah, that sucks. That sucks so much. Well, let's see if we can progress Fia at all. I am would you like me the blessing is would you like now man that's lame I hope this didn't lock me out of Fia's questline somehow I doubt it maybe she like switches what she does at the Altus Plateau but you ask uh yeah all you can ask dear her about is the, the black knife print alright well I guess that's everything for this episode dirty. sorry that quest glitched out Stuff like that. I'm honestly pretty frustrated about it. Um, the Vike thing and also this, because I had no idea this would happen. if I, I didn't know I had to talk to Fia first. So, I apologize. Uh, but anyways, that's going to wrap up this episode. I guess next episode is the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. So, I will see you guys next time. I'm looking for the wave for Rhea Lucaria. Later, guys. Peace.